Hey guys, this is a video from the Law and Crime channel. Um, I thought it was interesting because I think a lot of women need to understand what they're doing when they're out there searching for these, quote, sugar daddies, especially if you're on a website and all of that. You need to know that there's just crazy psychopathic people all around, and there are people that are out there looking to manipulate people. And one of the best ways you can manipulate today's modern women is money, with money. So ladies, make sure that you pay close attention to this video because it's very important. As you can see what the title says, Sugar Daddy targeted women online to drug and grape them, according to the DA. Let's continue. I'll give some of my, uh, my comments as the video goes. He methodically carried out what was clearly pre-planned crimes with the sole purpose of satisfying his deviant sexual desire. A construction worker from Pennsylvania, he's accused of drugging and raping women, targeting them using a website promising women a sugar daddy. And the DA believes there are more victims out there. This is a woman's worst nightmare, a young woman's worst nightmare. Welcome to Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. When the DA in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, calls this case and the allegations being made against Andrew Gallo a woman's worst nightmare, she is 100% right. The allegations in this case are terrifying. Andrew Gallo lived outside of Philadelphia. District Attorney Jen Shorn says Gallo was meeting women on a site called sugardaddymeet.com and inviting them to his house to drug and rape them. You might be asking yourself, what's sugardaddymeet.com? Never heard of that one? I hadn't heard of it either until reading about this case. The site bills itself as a sugar daddy dating website. Sugardaddymeet.com claims it has 8.2 million selective members. It asks a question to men. Are you a successful, generous man looking for an honest relationship? And to women, are you an attractive, classy woman looking for a mentor? I want to stop right there and point something out. That last question, the question that's for women, are you an attractive, classy woman looking for a mentor? That is targeting a lot of these women uh, that you know, are highly successful, you know, they have these careers and, you know, stuff like that, because a lot of these women are looking for their equal. They're looking for a guy that's making more money than them and all that. So those women are easy targets for situations like this. So you have to be smart, ladies. That's why everything can't be about money. Just because a guy has money and you think he's rich, that doesn't mean that they're a good person. The site also says it's a location for generous men and attractive women looking to form honest relationships. But the DA says these were not honest relationships. DA Shorn says Andrew Gallo started contacting women on Sugar Daddy Meet in June of 2023, and the women would go to his house for dates. An affidavit says victim one went to Gallo's house in Levittown last Christmas Eve. The affidavit says CV1, that's how she's identified, states that when she got to Gallo's residence, it was only her, Gallo, and his dog there. CV1 reported that Gallo made her a drink in the kitchen, which she did not witness him making, and she was playing with the dog. CV1 then advises that she does not drink often, so she was unsure what type of drink he made, but described the drink as having a sugar rim. The woman, according to the affidavit, said she didn't sleep that night and she felt both energetic and cool. She also said that she and Gallo had sex and that he choked her so much that her airflow was restricted and she had to tell him to stop. She then took a drug test for a job she was applying for and it came up positive for both meth and cocaine. Here's the DA on more of what happened to this woman and other victims. He ultimately raped five of the six victims while sexually assaulting those six victims, he also physically assaulted those victims. He used such force in strangling his victims that some lost consciousness. These victims suffered such ill effects from the, from the drugs that they un unknowingly ingested that some reported being up for days. One said she was up for seven straight days, unable to fall asleep. A number of them sought medical attention due to the severity of the side effects of the drugs that they unknowingly ingested. Some reported experiencing hallucinations and psychosis. You know what? Another thing you should, people should be aware of is that what if you're a woman and you have a heart problem or something like that and you put yourself in a situation like this and you're drugged? Maybe you have cocaine in your system. That could cause you to have a heart attack.
So, you know, you have to be very, very aware of what's going on. And you definitely should not be accepting anything ingestible from somebody that you don't know. I mean, ladies, please take your focus off of money. Stop thinking money makes people a certain way because there's crazy people out there. Now, if you look at this guy right here, he's probably what a lot of women would consider um, an attractive guy or something like that. And he's just a predator. But women are falling for it because of this money thing. Also, his dog is another hook because a lot of women like dogs. We'll have more on the drugs that the DA says police found in Gallo's home. But she said last month police actually went to Gallo's home with a search warrant and caught him in the act. They executed a search warrant not too long ago. Listen, if you've been in a car accident, don't call an attorney. Use this AI app instead. That's what I did, and that's how I got the ago. And clearly the defendant was unaware that they would be arriving at his home. And not only did they find an uh, open bottle of alcohol that contained methamphetamine mixed within, but they actually found a victim being victimized when they arrived. Their work is not done, though, because we are quite confident there that there are more victims in this case. Can you imagine? That woman is incredibly lucky that police arrived when they did. Another woman, identified as CV2 in the affidavit, described Gallo giving her a glass of wine in the summer of 2023. And about 45 minutes later, she said she felt like all of her inhibitions were gone and that she was aroused. CV2, according to the document, said Gallo asked her to put on lingerie that he had bought for his ex-girlfriend and that he introduced sex toys into their encounter. The document said CV2 later asked Gallo if he had drugged her because she hadn't felt that way in the past after drinking wine. The woman told police that Gallo said he had forgotten that he had put Molly in the bottle of wine. Um, methamphetamine was one of the substances found in his home in that open bottle of tainted liquor. Um, we do believe, though, other substances such as MDNA, often referred to as Molly, um, and other uh, substances were uh, perhaps administered to these victims. And, you know, obviously this investigation is still unfolding as it relates to that. Now, CV2 said she went camping with Gallo in October of last year. The police officer wrote in the affidavit, he tried to choke her while they were having sex, placing his hand around her throat and squeezing, trying to make her pass out. CV2 stated she tried to fight against the choking, telling Gallo she was scared to pass out and did not want to be choked. The officer said Gallo told the woman that's how it works and that she was supposed to pass out because that was the fun in it. Other women described similar interactions with Gallo. Uh, well, I mean, some described that he was literally having intercourse with them so violently and choking them that they would uh, clearly indicate they wanted it to stop and that they were terrified and he disregarded that. Um, some would describe that uh, like involuntary movements, like one victim said her jaw was constantly going back and forth, back and forth based on, you know, uh, drugs. And some of these women never touched an illegal substance in their life and obviously suffered terrible ill effects. Andrew Gallo faces several charges, including five counts of rape causing impairment, six counts of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, four counts of strangulation and corruption of minors. The victims in this case range in age from 17 to 30. And a lot of what is in the affidavit is incredibly graphic. The DA says Gallo used the screen name Drewster420 on sugardaddymeat.com. The women described to police really rough sex. Some had bruising from being choked. And one woman who advertised herself as 19 when she was actually 17 quoted Gallo as telling her that she was going to receive a punishment. The teenage girl said that Gallo gave her a lot of tequila, 15 shots is what she said, and that he slapped and choked her. The teen described his home as having a lot of lingerie in it. The affidavit says she went to the hospital and later tested positive for methamphetamine and amphetamine. Those are both stimulants and THC. My question is, where where were her parents at? 17 years old? Why does she even have access to get on a site like that? You know, a lot of you parents out there, you need to stop pacifying your children with devices and phones and all that type of stuff because you don't want to deal with them. Because if you don't pay attention, somebody else will. Again, 
lucky that the girl is still here lucky that the girl is still alive albeit she's going to be scarred for the rest of her life because of this but parents come on man 17 years old i mean it's a complete difference between a 17 year old and a 30 year old or something like that falling into this but a 17 year old someone that doesn't even have their brain is not even fully developed to reason and all that come on man come on adults y'all got to do better than that you need to be monitoring your children and the DA said she believes there are more victims who haven't reported their interactions with Gallo. The victims in this case are so courageous. They came forward to report crimes that, quite frankly, predators like this assume the victims won't have the strength to do so. And I commend them for their strength and courage. I commend the two that initially reported this case and each and every one thereafter that disclosed their victimization to the police. The DA described the level of cooperation that her office received from MeetSugarDaddy.com. And they were not very cooperative and gave us the bare minimum and not specifically what we asked for. And it's not lost on me that these, these platforms know that they're inviting dangerous things to unfold. Um, we do find some social media platforms very cooperative with law enforcement. I would state unequivocally that Sugar Daddy was not one of those platforms. Yeah, because they don't want to lose money. They don't want to lose money. It was a thing not too long ago, and it might be still ongoing with even like the Airbnbs, people getting caught with hidden cameras in there, spying on people, doing all these weird things. And then when law enforcement reaches out to them, they don't want to cooperate and all that. It's all about money for a lot of these companies that, that do this. But I think you know, uh, websites like that, they need to just, just be wiped off the map because they just send the wrong message and the vulnerable are just, you know, swept up by it. And then you got, cause to me, if you're like a rich guy and you, you're wealthy and all that, why do you even need to get on a website to find a woman? And why would you want to get on a website to find a sugar baby? Their whole idea is to take money from you, to take advantage of you. So why even be there? Okay. Um, if there are no further questions, thank you for your time. Now, I mentioned earlier that I had never heard of MeetSugarDaddy.com, but you might remember Backpage.com. The feds shut it down because it was a place where sex trafficking was rampant. The DA was asked about whether MeetSugarDaddy.com is committing a crime by not cooperating with law enforcement. I remember back in the trafficking cases when we, uh, other states, attorney general's offices shut down Backpage, which was commonly hosting human trafficking cases, I mean, you know, sexual crimes. And unfortunately, it just drove predators to other more obscure sites. So it's hard to say. Um, but right now, our focus is identifying more victims of Andrew Gallo, but also certainly putting on blast how dangerous uh, platforms are like this. John yeah, very dangerous, but at the same time, women have to start taking accountability for their actions and their choices. Because if you're not on there, you can't be taken advantage of. You can't be put in those situations. So I don't believe in this whole thing of, oh, it's all men. Men are, men are the problem. Yeah, this guy did something wrong and all that. But ladies, you have to take accountability for what you do. If you put yourself in situations, a lot of that is on you because you put yourself there. You're just chasing the almighty dollar. You're, you're setting yourself up to be taken advantage of. And like I said, these ladies are, ladies are lucky that they're still here. John Clune is a civil sexual assault attorney. He's also a former sex crimes prosecutor. John, your thoughts on this case? I was kind of shocked when I was reading the documents. Yeah, it's it's one of the more disturbing cases. A couple of reasons. It's I think it's one of the more kind of predatory sec, uh, series of facts that we've seen on this type of a case. Also, the thing that comes to mind with these sugar daddy platforms is they are attracting some of the most vulnerable people in our community. And, and that really is a setup for a disaster like this. Yeah, the whole sugar daddy thing. I mean, these are supposed to be older men who, I guess, they're calling them mentors. I'm not sure I would call it that. But I, you know, I thought a sugar daddy was somebody who provided kind of money and things of that nature and gifts uh, to women who would provide companionship. And this is like, my God, this is like, the allegations here are just blatant sexual assault and practically torture with the choking um this whole sugar daddy thing i mean is that just a modern day euphemism for sex work it's exactly
what it is. I mean, this is essentially, you know, prostitution. If, if, if you ask the, the platforms their take on this, they're saying, hey, we're just making the introductions. What, what happens thereafter is something that's out of our control. But what they're really doing is facilitating prostitution in the cases of these underage kids, which is very common on these platforms. It's really uh, child sex trafficking. How prolific are these sugar daddy websites? I mean, I, I've heard about sugar daddies, women getting sugar daddies. I mean, are these things cropping up all over the place? Yeah, they're and they're they're worldwide, and they're they're a um, significantly lucrative business. They make millions and millions of dollars a month. Well, the one thing that you need to be uh, focused on is why are they able to do that? The reason why they're popping up everywhere is because they have this messaging from women that that is what they want that is what they're looking for so if you have a lot of women saying i don't want no man unless he makes this i don't want no man unless he has that that's opening up the door for these type of sites and you have to understand that the, you know without any kind of demand there is no supply if women weren't out there demanding men make all this money basically i want a sugar daddy and all that because that's really what it boils down to you could not have they could not have the success that they have on these these websites like this so again i think a lot of this earnest also needs to be on the women and the choices that they make you cannot just say it's all men okay you can't do that e even though you're saying yeah it's a you know, kind of a, a prostitution type of thing and all that. But the women are, uh, uh, you know, voluntarily putting themselves in that position. So across the board, it all needs to vanish. It all needs to change. And women need to not put themselves in that situation. And I'm very passionate about this because I have three daughters. You know what I'm saying? And I've taught them their whole life. Don't put yourself in situations like that. You cannot do that. And like I said, the earnest needs to be on those uh, 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 women, and it also needs to be on the parents that raise these women. Uh, largely just from fees for subscribing to their their sites. So it's a you know it's a dark side of the um, you know if you can call it the dating app world. They're not exactly dating apps, but they're similar to that. Um, but they are unfortunately incredibly um, successful financially. The DA in this case, Jen Shorn, said that basically, you know, they usually get some good cooperation from some social media platforms. SugarDaddyMeet.com, not so much. Uh, they were not cooperative. She almost likened this in some ways to Backpage, which was shut down years ago by the feds. So, I mean, they're not cooperating or they don't want to cooperate, but sometimes they are going to have to produce information. Are we going to maybe see an effort? to shut down websites like this because it this seems like a brave new world and that it's going to be incredibly dangerous for these women thank god that they didn't die that they survived yeah i mean i i would love to see the department of justice step in here it seems like it's a harder thing for them to do for back page because what's being advertised isn't purely sex work it is really for these these introductions but i think there's enough that goes on with these sugar daddy websites that um, there is a close enough analogy to back page that I think I'm sure the DOJ looks at this and they're looking for you know opportunities to be able to step in. What these what the advertising is, they make it sound like these are college kids that need, you know, a little extra money for for books or or not that those exist anymore, but tuition or whatever the case may be. And that's that's not the average sugar baby that is attracted to the site. It's somebody who you know, they may be underage. There's a lot of other underage kids on these sites and they, they. Sometimes the only thing more difficult than running a business is finding. It really can be desperate for money. And that's what makes it such a vulnerable population for somebody like what um, this gentleman. The victims in this case ranged in age, the DA said, from 17 to 30. So we did have one who was 17, and the DA said she thinks that there are more victims out there. They just have to find them. And she's hoping that, you know, by publicizing this, that there will be other women who come forward. Um, I mean, this, this went on for a year. There are six victims, five he's accused of raping. I just can't even imagine how often this was going on and these women going to his house. Um, you know, this seems very dangerous.
Oh, he's definitely been doing it for a while. He was definitely had it going on. You know what I'm saying? Because once you get away with something that you know is wrong and you just keep getting away with it, you're just going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. But again, these sites would not exist if if women didn't go to them, if women didn't access them. And I understand what he's saying, you know, you, you know, young kids and all of that, and they're, you know, vulnerable to this type of situation. Um, but older women do the same thing. And again, if there was not a demand, then this not, would not exist. So it all needs to go away. The guy is is a horrible human being. But you have to understand that these people exist. And any type of avenue, any type of end that they can find to manipulate and take advantage of women, they will do. In the same way that any way a woman can see that she will keep, she can take advantage of a man and manipulate and get what he want, get what she wants, uh, from him she's going to do it let's not wipe away the fact that these women went on this thing because they thought that they could run into a sugar daddy with sugary money let's be let's keep it real we can't keep doing this this one-sided focus thing yeah i mean in general if, if, if you know if if you when you have a series of abuses like this if you know of one there's probably another dozen for that one so uh, it's hard to it's hard to completely speculate on how many could be out there, but it's impressive that so many young women have come forward. This is an unusual, um, you know, number of people. This is an embarrassing experience that they've been through. They don't want to acknowledge that they signed up for the Sugar Baby platform, so that's why it's uncommon to get this level of cooperation. And I give the the DA's office credit for whatever they've done to help facilitate that. But I'm glad they're advertising it. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they get additional victims come forward. This whole thing about the drugging, too. I mean, they were saying that they found a, a number of different drugs in the systems of these women, methamphetamine, cocaine. These are all stimulants. And, and the victims claimed uh, in some instances that he was choking them. I mean, really hurting them where they, they had to basically tell him, beg him to stop. Uh, where does this come from? I mean, he, he's, he's passing them a drink and acting like it's a margarita when indeed it's, they said it's salted with meth and cocaine. Yeah, so where is this coming from in this guy's mind since you're a former sex crimes prosecutor? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting the use of stimulants. It's not the most common um, form of drug facilitated uh, sexual assault. Usually they look for the depressants that kind of knock people out. But um, obviously there was, you know, the, the use of, if there's ecstasy that was on board that he, you know, he wanted this to be, you know, it kind of, uh, um, you know, not not a passed out individual, but somebody who just was so up on the the stimulants that, you know, they, they couldn't make their own decision about consenting to behavior. The strangulation is extremely disturbing. I mean, there's a lot of correlation between strangulation in either sexual assault cases or domestic violence cases with um, with murder. Um, this It's very common to have that kind of crossover behavior. And so that's something that I'm sure was a red flag um, to the prosecutors as well. But what's in the mindset of this individual when, when he does something like this is obviously a massive amount of uh, control that he's looking for. I mean, this isn't looking for some sort of sexual encounter. This is a power and control um, need that he's trying to satisfy. Well, it's certainly disturbing. I mean, he's, of course, uh, presumed innocent until proven guilty. Uh, but what is laid out in the documents and what the DA said was going on in this case is um, just incredibly disturbing. And it makes you wonder how much of this is going on on these websites across the country, especially if a man is giving a woman money and thinks that he can just do whatever he wants then uh, because he is paying for sex. Yeah. And, and like I said, it also, because of what's going on in the background, very rare that these women uh, even come forward in the first place. It's almost like the perfect platform for a predator. Yeah. You know, it's really sad um, that you have situations like this happen, but like I said, all across the board, it needs to be wiped out. You know, women need to stop running around saying, I'm looking for a sugar daddy. Even if they're not saying that in those words, they are saying things like he needs to make, you know, 12 million figures. He needs to have a $10 million a month. He needs to do this. He needs to own this and own that. It's the same thing. It's just different wording. So when women are constantly putting this out there in, in the world, you know what I'm saying? In the atmosphere or the universe, whatever you want to call it. You're going to have people that are going to take advantage of that. And that's something that everyone needs to understand. 
You know, you're going to meet somebody that's crazy, that's a psychopath and all of that. And there are people out there, men out there that are crazy like that, that's, that say, okay, if I'm giving you money, I'm going to take what I want. And in the same token, you have women out there that says, I'm not going to do anything for you. I'm just going to take what I want. So it all needs to change. And like I, like I said, I have three daughters and I say this to them all the time and I'll say it to you guys and I'll end this. Money cannot be the most important thing in your life. You cannot use your body to manipulate, to try to get things that you want. And you cannot assume that everybody is a nice person. I don't care if they got the brightest teeth in the world. I don't care if they got 10 dogs. I don't care if they're the cleanest person in the world. I don't care what perception or what image they put to you. You have to take time to figure out who people are and you cannot put yourself in vulnerable position, vulnerable position, position, going to men's house, even going to a woman's house. You don't know them. That's a problem. And I'll give you an example from the other side. I have a friend, a family friend, actually. And this happened to him about 15 years ago. He was dating, this is in LA. He was trying to date this woman because he was a, a mechanic and I would take my car to get fixed where he worked. And I went to take my car there one day and he wasn't there. And I was asking the other guy there, I'm like, where, where is he? Oh, I don't know, we haven't seen him. So I come back, get my cards done and he's still not there. I'm like, he didn't come back? Yeah, yeah, we haven't heard from him. Come to find out that this guy had met a girl that came to get her car fixed, right? Very hot, very attractive. He shoots his shot, talks to her, ends up at her house, right? He's in her house chilling, watching a movie. Next thing you know, knock on the door. Guess who it is? Her ex-boyfriend and one of his friends and two other women. And the scene looked like it was two couples coming to hang out with them. But it was her ex-boyfriend and the women were his cousins. You know what happened? They went in the house, locked the doors, and they beat this guy for 72 hours. Held him hostage for 72 hours. Do you know why the woman did that to him? because she thought that he had a whole lot of money because he drove a nice car and he had nice jewelry. He was single. He had no children or anything like that. Young guy, attractive guy, almost killed him just because of that. So he shouldn't have went there without knowing who she was. Just like these women should not be going to men's houses, taking drinks and doing all this stuff without knowing who they are right if you're going to start a relationship off of something like this type of website you're already at a deficit you're already losing you're already setting yourself up so you have to be smart but again we need to kill this message that women put out there about these men with money and we need to kill this message of these men acting desperate and doing anything for a woman's attention because it's not good. All this stuff just opens up the door for predators and psychopaths to take advantage of other people. That's my take on this video. I thought it was important to show this video, especially to women, to so you guys can wake up and understand what you're doing when you put this messaging out there. But you guys let me know what you think about it in the comments. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're on uh, TikTok, make sure to follow me and give me some love over there. I really would appreciate it. I'm definitely trying to get to 2,000 uh, subscribers here on YouTube as well. As always, thanks a lot for watching this video and have a good day. Peace. May the force be with you.